That it, Boston, tell us about some of the characters you work with at National. In particular, if you had any dealings with uh, the, the famous Charlie Spork. Yeah, well, at first, just, just general, national, my impression is they were very cost, con very cost conscious, particularly in the early 1970s. Uh, many of you have seen the picture of uh, Weidler putting a goat out in front of Building 1, and, and that kind of reflected the, his reaction to the attitude, and it was correct attitude. Uh, there was also stories about Fred Bilek, who was one of the VP, insisting that when he traveled, that whenever they went, we st went in Hong Kong, we stayed at the Hong Kong YMCA. Uh, and also, Bob tutored the monk with Fred Bollock <laughs> early on. You didn't even have your own room to do room? Didn't even have your own room. So it was in, in early, no frills, egalitarian management, uh, very modest set of car facilities. Uh, one of the things we did was you, we used contract manufacturers for assembly and test early on. And there was a whole series of about four countries spread in Singapore, in Korea, in Hong Kong, and in Taiwan that we all set in the business of building glob top transistors. Uh, and they basically kept the manufacturing, but lowered the price and kept the manufacturing operation of Fairchild running until they brought on their lines of integrated circuits. Of that group of companies, the only one that has survived in any way is basically the one that was in Korea, which was Gold Star, which got merged into Hynex much later on. Uh, my remembrance, uh, National was my first exposure to plastic dual inline packaging. Um, very dynamic time in the first half of the 70s. Uh, in the, all of the 70s, we started, I, we, we started 12 new plants, 10, uh, between uh, 1970 and 1975, spread throughout the U.S. and the rest of the world. Uh, very competitive. There is a poster, and it was a, 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 a non-deplume that we kind of relished in. We were called the Animals of Silicon Valley, for those of you who remember it. And there was a big poster that was done uh, along that line. Uh, proprietary linear, uh, proprietary microprocessors, which ultimately were not that successful and, and were subject of a lot of debate. Second source logic, TTL, which turned out to be quite successful, uh, and second source memory, which wasn't quite, wasn't as successful. Uh, okay, uh, one of the other memories I have, uh, going back about into early on in Fairchild, probably were two of the most dramatic memories I had. Uh, one uh, was in August of 62, having to go back, since I had gone out for lunch to work out at the gym, come back, was listening on the radio, and heard the announcement about the assassination of John F. Kennedy. The total plant, when you think about how a plant operates, really has, while they're in there, has almost no outside contact. I had to come back about 1.30, and and now it's go out of the production floor, out into a small office with little with full window, get everybody, we could use the phone to get on the microphone and announce to everybody that he'd been assassinated and died. Uh, and just the dramatic impact of the shock on everybody's face lives with me forever. Wow, that was November sixty three. Yeah.